Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Rachel from Rachel on Paper and today I'm going to be walking you all through my reading journal setup. So I've been excited to film this video for a while but it's taken me a couple of months to finish this setup. My reading journal is something I work on when I have time um, but time has been hard to come by lately. It's a busy season of life. I have a young kid, a busy job, I've been traveling a bit for work and so I just haven't had a moment to, um, I haven't had a ton of time to journal and do that fun stuff nor film YouTube videos, but I'm excited to be filming this today. So let's jump right in. So my reading journal, I decided to use this uh, grid notebook from Sterling Inc. This is one of the first releases. I know she just um, released some new updated versions of the grid notebook with um, page numbers here. These don't have page numbers, but that's fine. This is the like full year version or the one that has as many notes or uh, as is as thick as her full year planner. I believe it has like 500 something pages, but I'm, um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I'm not going to need that many pages in a reading journal in a year, but my plan is, and why I was really attracted to this thicker, uh, notebook, was uh, my plan is to use this over a couple of years. So I'm imagining getting at least two, if not three years in this reading journal, and then it being really fun to, you know, flip through the whole journal, see all of the books I've read and reread over the last few years, and have all of those sort of like bookish collections and trackers in one place. And it being like a really fulfilling, fulfilling notebook to flip through when it's done. That's my vision. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but I'm excited about it uh, because I love this notebook. It's beautiful. I'm, I have no doubt it'll hold up and I imagine it would just be like beautiful and fun to flip through once these pages start filling up more. So I have this, this is in a clear cover from, from Capspresso Co. I uh, love these covers because they're like thicker than the Midori covers you get for A5 and they have more pockets. They have pockets in the back here too um, and it feels just really sturdy. Uh, a sturdy cover that I don't need uh, you know any other cover around. Plus I don't really take my reading journal anywhere so it, it's more about like protecting it uh, from my son and just in the house. Okay so let's get into the setup. I started setting this up at the end of last year and so something I did um, and so I put you know some stickers down at the front I did a little reading um, or a little sticker collage here on this cover page I uh, decided to swatch all of the washi tape that I was planning to use for this setup I don't even think I ended up using all of this washi tape but um, it was fun it was like my most bookish washi tapes and some florals and some grid washi and then here we get into the reading journal. Some of these collections and trackers I have not completely filled up yet or haven't finished, but I think this setup is finished enough to uh, walk you all through it and to talk about um, how I'm planning to use it this year. So I have just a quote page here. This is a quote from Stephen King. Books are uniquely portable magic and that captures so much about why I love reading. I love feeling transported into another world or somebody else's life. Um, and then here I decided to do one of, these spreads are, I feel like really common in people's reading journal setups, but I started this setup initially thinking it would be my, like a tracker for how many books I read in 2024, but then I counted out how, like I wasn't paying attention to how many books I was drawing on each shelf and realized it was too many. <laughs> um, and so what I decided to do instead was make this my physical TBR list. And so what I started to do was write in the, the physical books I own that I know I want to read or reread, and then I was going to slowly color them in when I read them. I have not finished filling this in, but I will, I'm sure I will do that eventually and then it'll be really fun to flip through. And then what I decided to do um, was 
move some of my 2023 collections into this notebook. I thought it would be kind of inspiring to see the books I read in 2023. I set a big goal for myself in 2023 to read 50 books and I met that goal or exceeded that goal by a couple books. And that was a big difference from how I had previously been reading. I was in graduate school up until 2022 uh, getting a PhD and I feel like graduate school just like killed my love of like reading for leisure and 2023 was the year that I was going to find that again and I feel you know I started out slower I was reading two three books a month and then I started picking up pace and I feel like I, I was just finding a reading practice that worked again for me and finding a love for reading for leisure again, which was important because I feel like a big part of my identity is that I'm a reader and it was very disorienting to not be reading for leisure, especially once I was done with graduate school and I didn't have the looming stress of a dissertation taking up as much brain space. And so I thought it would be fun, again, to put those final 2023 trackers here, especially again, because I knew I wanted this reading journal to reflect a couple of years, I would at least get to see the books I read in 2023. So I printed out these um, book covers, I printed them out on my um, my HP sprocket. Uh, it's not the best quality, but it's fine. Um, and it works and it's reliable. So, you know, I've been thinking about potentially picking up another photo printer with a better quality. I'm still debating that. If you have any opinions or thoughts on the HP Sprocket and a better alternative, please leave them down in the comments. Uh, but I essentially save, you know, each of these book covers and it will print um, like a two by two little like collage with my HP Sprocket and cut them up and it works out great. Uh, I don't even love how I will say like I don't love how I ended up doing this layout like all of the different colors I'm using but it's fine like I wasn't going to reprint them it doesn't look terrible um and then I also used these little dot stickers to indicate books that were audiobooks and books that were library books I got really into audiobooks last year it was a huge way that I was able to um read so many books if you are on the fence about audiobooks, I'm just gonna take a moment to sing their praises and uh, note a couple things. It's really important, the narration really matters. And so I really encourage you, if you're thinking about audiobooks, to find other people's recommendations for great audiobook narrations and to listen to samples of the audiobooks, like really try to listen to them and get, like see if you can get lost in it uh, before buying it. But there are so many phenomenal audiobooks and I feel like I have now, I am now an audiobook evangelist. I can't stop talking about how much I love audiobooks because um, I feel like it's just opened up this, uh, opened up a lot more time for me to read. You know, when I'm walking a dog, doing laundry, doing house chores, I can also be um, sinking myself into a good book. And then I did this little collage, um, summarizing the number of books I read in 2023. And then I did the spread of uh, like a recap of my reading in 2023. A lot of these, a lot of this information comes from Storygraph. Uh, Storygraph is an alternative to Goodreads if you're not familiar with it. Um, Goodreads, I've been on Goodreads for a long time and it's fine, but I feel like like they really haven't updated that app in like 10 years. Um, and Storygraph gives you some great like statistics about your reading in ways that I really love. And so right now I'm keeping both up to date. We'll see how long that lasts. I'll link both my story graph and Goodreads down below if you're interested in following me. I keep both of them up to date and I'm trying to add more reviews for the books I read in or the books I'm reading in 2024 to those, um, those sites. And then from there we get into my 2024 setup. So what I, I decided to do, I ended up writing a quote down here. It was a long quote from Anne Lamott's Bird by Bird. 
which is a book about writing. I, you know, write for a living and I like writing for fun. Um, and so I've been reading about writing a lot and the craft of writing recently. Uh, and this quote really stuck out to me. And so I wanted to write it down here. Uh, I still haven't finished this book. I read half of it. And then I'm, um, it's not that I didn't finish it. I just got distracted with other books I was reading. I'm sure I will plan to finish it at some point, uh, hopefully soon because it, it's phenomenal. And, uh, you know, the advice is way more accessible than I think I anticipated. I wish I would have read it earlier in my dissertation stage. And then I tipped in this vellum from Sterling Inc. This was from the January subscription kit. I was obsessed with this sort of celestial theme. It's so beautiful. Um, and so I put this in to demark the 2023 pages from the 2024. And then I have this 2024 cover page. This is uh, from Virgo and Paper. And then here I have my reading goals. I usually um, for a long time just had like, I wanted to read uh, reading goals in terms of the number of books, but I was trying to be more expansive and think about what my reading priorities are. And so I really wanna get through my physical TBR list, read more library books, um, what I'm calling the banned book project, uh, which is reading books that have been banned in school districts in the US. Uh, Toni Morrison's work, which overlaps with the Band Book Project. I want to write a review for every book I read. I have been writing reviews. I haven't posted them online yet, but I am going to get to them. I have a backlog, um, but I've captured my thoughts. I really like writing reading reviews because it helps me remember what I loved about a book. And I really rely on reading reviews from other public readers to help me pick books uh, and also think about reading. Like I like seeing how other people reacted to books I read. And so I really want to contribute more to those conversations. Um, and again, re writing reviews helps m me as a reader. And then I want to find a uh, book club in real life. I used to belong to a book club uh, several years ago when I lived in New York. And I haven't, I feel like there's so many virtual book clubs. So I really want to like find a book club um, in person. I want to reread the books of my youth. This is sort of related to the banned book projects, but I've been thinking a lot about, you know, like people's opinions about what books kids should and shouldn't have access to, which has led me to want to think about what books were really formative in my life and see how they feel in revisiting them. So I've been rereading the Harry Potter books. I have some thoughts and feelings. I have lots of feelings in large part because J.K. Rowling really sucks um, in terms of her current anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans shtick and activism. I don't I don't know what you call it, but she's doing, doing the most unnecessarily and in incredibly harmful and in incredibly harmful ways, uh, which is really leaving me wrestling with like, like how much I can engage with Harry Potter, which really bums me out because I grew up on Harry Potter and I love the books in the series when I was a kid. Um, but that's an aside that I'm planning to write about on my Substack if you want to follow me. My Substack so far has been mostly about books. Um, and so if you're watching a reading journal setup, I'm assuming you are also a reader. Uh, and so if you are interested in reading my book reviews, um, please subscribe or check out my Substack down in the description box below. And then I also want to reorganize my home library, which I think will help me with my reading goals um, because I want to make sure like my physical TBR list is separate from the books that I've read or the books that I, at least I'm not prioritizing reading right now. And then uh, here I have like a reading tracker. I ended up writing down 63 because uh, it was even, <laughs> but my um, goal is to read 60 books. If I get to 63, that's great. I am ahead of pace, so it's possible I might even need to add more, which there's space to do here. Uh, but essentially the way I've set up this legend is I have different colors for physical, digital, and audio. And then I put a little gold heart at the bottom if it's a library book, because I do take out, like I do get audio and digital books from the library as well as physical books. Um, and so I've been doing a good job of uh, using the library more and you'll see there's a real mix of um, book formats. I struggle the most with physical books in large part because I love like carrying around my Kindle. It's so easy to keep reading on, you know, wherever I am or if I'm out, you know, hanging out with my son. 
it's much easier to read on a Kindle rather than have him, you know, accidentally grab a hardcover book and rip a page, which has happened to me. He's two and a half. It's not his fault. Um, but because it has happened, I mostly only read Kindle books around him now. And I like reading Kindle books when I'm in bed because it's just more comfortable to hold. And if, you know, my husband turns down the lights, I can adjust the light on my Kindle. And so uh, I really struggle with reading physical books, but I have so many physical books I want to read. And so I'm really trying to carve out more space um, in my day and my weekends to read more physical books. That's an aside. Um, but I'm excited uh, about this reading tracker, which will tell me more about just like how I'm reading. Uh, and it'll also help me uh, know if I'm meeting my goal of reading more library books. And then here I decided to do a book bracket. I've seen these on people, different people's, um, in people, different people's reading journal setups before, and I've never done one and I thought it would be fun. And so I started to fill out my favorite books of each month. And then of those, which one was my favorite? Although I really debated and maybe it was The Fraud, but I love both of these books. The Fraud by Zadie Smith and The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by um, Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Uh, I really love both of them. They're probably two of the favorite, my favorite books I've read so far this year. And the day I was filling this out, I decided to pick The Daughter of Dr. Moreau over The Fraud, but it could have easily um, been The Fraud. They're both excellent. And this will just be, a, you know, another fun way to um, track my reading and think about my favorite books of the year. And then here I set up a 2024 to be read uh, space. I haven't filled it out yet. And my plan was to write, try to be more intentional um, or just try to think about the books I really want to be sure I read this year. I have some goals, again, my physical TBR list. And so going through my physical TBR and outlining the books I absolutely want to read from my physical TBR, uh, new releases that I really want to read this year. Um, I am very much a mood reader and I pick up whatever book is vibing with me next. And so I want to be a little bit more intentional be, um, because there's some books that have been on my TBR for so long or that I've had in my physical collection that I really want to get to. And then here I have uh, a, a collection I set up called Reading the Classics. These are some authors that I really want to read um, or reread their entire, like, all of their books. I want to read all of August Wilson's plays. I want to read and reread all of Toni Morrison's work and Octavia Butler's work. And so I decided to write them all out. And, you know, this is one of the main reasons I was really excited about having, or one of the reasons I was really excited about having a reading journal that would uh, span multiple years, because I don't anticipate finishing all of these books in 2024. But I could imagine finishing them over three years. And so I will probably put a tab mark here or some other you know, way to demarcate this so I can come back to it regularly and I can reference this collection in uh, subsequent years as well. And then here I set up a collection called Reading for Research. Uh, I work as a researcher at a think tank here in DC and I need to read a lot. Uh, I need to keep up with my fields to be able to write about the topics I write about. And I wanted to make some list of books that I know I need to read uh, in my area. And that's like pretty broad. Um, I read, I'm, I work in education policy, but I also, you know, want to keep up with some of the literatures and housing policy because, there, you know, housing policy is uh, very much, um, is very consequential to education policy. But that's all to say, like anything kind of related to research, I wanted um, to track here. And I wanted to try to like write out some books that I know would be valuable for me to read that are in some way related to my areas of research. And then here, this um, I set up this spread to track my banned books project. There are a couple of lists of the top banned books across like the Washington Post and New York Times. Uh, and they there's a lot of overlap, but some different books. And so my plan was to go um, back to those articles and write out all of like any book that pops up on any of those lists. Uh, Pen America also keeps 
track of the top band books. And so my plan was to write those out. I picked up a, a couple of them. Uh, there's also overlap with like Toni Morrison's uh, work and write those out and then track that reading over a couple years again. And then from there, I get into um, the track, the main tracker I set up to uh, track my, I've said tracker so many times, um, the books I read in 2024. So I've uh, print out again, using my HP Sprocket, pictures of the books I read, and I'll put my star reading down here. And so I uh, counted this out so I'd have two months on one page, which should work. Um, given my pace of reading, there are a couple more books I need to print out here. Uh, but you know, this means that it's really easy to keep this up to date because essentially the only real trackers I need to keep up to date on a regular basis are this one and this one. I don't put like my reading reviews in here, my reading notes, all of that is digital again. And then I uh, sectioned off uh, more pages for as many pages as I think I'll need in 2024 and it'll be really fun to flip through. I love flipping through even though I don't really love like all the different colors I used here. I love flipping through this. It really reminds me of you know what my reading looked like last year and I'm excited to do that again for 2024. And then the last couple of spreads I uh, set up, I have a did not finish list. I haven't uh, DNF'd any books this year so far, but I did a couple, I didn't finish a couple books last year that I very intentionally set aside and told myself I'm not going to try to finish this. It's just too painful. Um, having a did not finish list has really helped me learn to, to stop trying to read books that I don't like. <laughs> there are too many great books in the world. There are too many books I want to read and forcing myself to finish every book I read is a perfect way to interrupt my reading practice and my reading flow and to start to get out of the habit of reading. For a long time, I was a person who would, who felt very strongly about finishing every book I read and only reading one book at a time. And that just meant, you know, when a book was, it was tough to get through and it took me a couple months, I just fell out of a reading practice, which isn't good. Um, and so I'm really committed to not finishing books that I don't like. That said, I do sometimes put aside books and I don't really put them here. Like I have in my head, like a did not finish yet list, uh, books I know I will pick up, but for whatever reason I got distracted or I needed to read something else for some other purpose. Um, and but those I'm sure I will finish at some point and I essentially keep them on my Goodreads and Storygraph as like currently reading until I finish them um, and as a reminder to finish them. And then from there I set up um, a spread where I would put quotes on reading. I came across this Malcolm X quote which I really loved which said I could spend the rest of my life reading just satisfying my curiosity um, and I felt like I had to write it down and so I set up this spread and I in general love the idea of just like capturing a bunch of different quotes on reading and on books uh, that I imagine I could use in my planner and I could also use in this reading journal for other you know cover pages or quotes pages I want to write. And then from there, I sectioned off some pages for reading notes. I didn't section off a ton, um, but if I need more, I need more. I have been taking some reading notes, which surprises me. I don't always take reading notes um, in a notebook. I usually take them digitally, but sometimes I just really love writing like long form by hand quotes and it helps me connect more to the work. Uh, so I read um, Naomi Klein's Doppelganger last month, or I finished it earlier this month. Fantastic book, phenomenal, really just incredible piece of work uh, about our current state of politics. And so I wrote down a bunch of quotes from that book. And then I wrote down some quotes from uh, Parable of the Sour, which I'm currently reading, and The Guest, which I finished last week. There's some more quotes I want to write down. But I'm not like writing down my thoughts about these books because again I write those down digitally. I'm trying to um, publish those in my Substack and on Goodreads and Storygraph 
not in my journal, uh, but I do love writing quotes down in my journal. So that's the plan here. And if I need more pages, I'm, I will just use more pages. And then here, I started this last night, actually. Um, I don't know if you've all, if you all haven't seen it, there's a great list published by The Atlantic last week um, with a list of the great American novels. And I was actually pretty impressed with this list. It had, it was, um, it was very diverse. I was, you know, I'm always nervous, <laughs> um, especially with The Atlantic these days about where something like that might go. Um, but it was a great list and I thought it'd be fun to write it down again, because I'm going to use this over a couple of years to then slowly check off what I've read, what I want to read, and add uh, stuff from this list to my TBR on Goodreads and Storygraph. So that's the end. I still have a lot of pages. You know, I'm, I don't know what, what you would say this is. It's not even a fifth of the way through this notebook. Um, and so I'm excited to see how much I can fill up this year. And again, I'm, I'm really trying to, um, commit to using this for a couple of years because I know it would be just beautiful filled up and so fun to flip through. So that is my reading journal setup. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And, uh, you know, if you are reading any of the same books as I'm reading or any recommendations, would love to talk books in the comments as well. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for spending time with me and talk to you all soon. Bye now.